Hey, this is Mark coming to you from Baker's Green Acres. Today is the 18th of October, 2017, and uh, I just thought I'd share a little bit of what I'm doing today. I am in uh, what we call the East Pen, and this is a half acre field, and this was the first field that we fenced when we got here and started farming this place 14 years ago. Okay, so the proximity is, there's the house, and so my bedroom window is, is right there on the corner. And we started fencing this field because we thought we wanted to be close to the animals and we wanted to, you know, be able to listen to them and things like that. That was in the early days, all right? This is, this 2004 is when we started this. Um, and this fence right here was the very first fence that I made. Here's a big girl coming over to say hello. These ones are kind of nice, but we just took their babies away from them a couple of days and so the boar is pushing them around now. Which by the way, that boar over there, his name is Little, and uh, if anybody needs a boar, contact me. He's half Mangalitsa and half large black red wattle and he's done a really nice job but his job is finished here so <clears throat> he needs to go to another farm and meet some other gals um, I don't need him anymore but he's still perfectly serviceable he's quite young I don't think he's two years old um, but that's a conversation for another time it's a that's a breeding conversation this is a fencing conversation so this fence right here, this fence line right here was the very first fence line that I built. And um, the fence itself, after 14 years, is still, you know, it's still shiny, uh, perfectly serviceable. But the way that I fenced it back then was, uh, you know, I was new at it, so I didn't, I didn't really know what I was doing. And so what we did is we put the corner post back together. Um, some of the pieces had come out of it just over time. And then we put in new posts. And these posts are fiberglass posts that I get from the oil fields. Uh, it's pipe that they use for piping water. And then we chop them off at six feet. We'll mark them at two feet drive them two feet and have four feet out and I'll show you some that are sitting on the ground right here that I haven't used yet and where these ones are by the road I painted them so I had some gray battleship gray automotive paint um, it's what I painted my two-ton with and uh, so I I painted them just so they'd look good out here by the road and these posts, these posts were actually the very first posts like these that I used. So these are about 10 years old. They were someplace else. We pulled them out and the weather had got to the fiberglass on them. So they were kind of pithy, you know, kind of punky. Um, still solid, but on the outside they had frayed a little bit. And when I put paint to them, it just sucked it right up. So it was a pretty good idea. Um, I guess the point that I'm trying to drive across here is one of the more important facets of a farming operation like this. Oh, it's too late. Look at Little's getting, he's getting their job done. Well, this might be interesting. People don't get to see this every day. Um, but one of the more, in, the more intricate things that we have to do is, uh, is fence. As you can imagine, you see how it looks in here, and then our back lawn is right here. Is she thinking that I'm little? Come here, girl. I'm not interested in you. Not like that. Um, so this has to be done well, because if they get out, you know, they're three, four hundred pounds. They're hard to get back in for one thing, and they can do a lot of damage. Uh, our garden is right up there. 
greenhouse is right next to it. So if they do get out of here, you know, that could be a big problem, plus the roads right here. These ones have never gotten out, even with the poor condition that the fence was in. So, okay, the fence was in bad shape. Um, the woven wire was sagging and this wire is not the wire that I use now. I use a 39 inch woven wire. Get out of here. And this was uh, much lower. I, don't, I think this is maybe a 30 inch or 29 inch or something like that. <clears throat> so what I've done is look out here by the road. This entire line is complete, totally complete. I put two strands of barb on top of it. And what that does, like these pigs are definitely not gonna jump out of this pen. Um, but what it does is the fence, this fence is up against the road, you can see. And there's no traffic on this road <clears throat> to speak of. But what I do sometimes is I put a temporary fence out here and I'll put cattle in here just to graze this off. And in it, it it's it's kind of like a an aesthetics thing. <clears throat> um, it just keeps it looking good. I mean, it's it's a lot of work, but it's not as much work as coming through with a weed whacker to knock all that down. And uh, <clears throat> I can feed a couple cows in there for a day or two, uh, a couple times a year. And if you have barbed wire on the top of the fence, it'll keep them from from leaning their full heads over because when they lean over, they'll get poked with this and they don't like that. Another thing that it does is it keeps people from stepping over. So then on a pen like this, I have to have a personnel gate. And that's what I'm working on today because I gotta get in here sometimes too. And this fence, look at, this is up to my, you know, it's up to my belly button and I cannot step over that. I would have to get some ladder or something to get over. And a lot of times if I have to get in here, it's because I have to do something really quick. And, uh, you know, but if you have people stepping over the fence all the time, especially if it's like you can almost get over it with barbed wire, then people push down on it and step over. And that's what leads to the fence getting getting pretty beat up. And, we, you know, we don't want that. <clears throat> so I'm putting the finishing touches on this. Last night at 10 o'clock, uh, with my headlight on, I put this top piece of barbed wire on the top. And... Now I have to bring the tractor out to the road here and be able to put some tension on that and stretch that. And then that will be done. Then the next thing that has to be done on all these pig pens, the way we do this, is we put one strand of electric. You see that post right there. Uh, one foot up and one foot out. All right, so I cut these fiberglass poles at two feet. We drive. We drive them in a foot so it leaves a foot out and then drill a hole through the top of them so they can so we can put a, a single strand of electric wire in that and that is really what is keeping these animals in um, the woven wire is like a secondary in the airplane industry we call it uh, belt and suspenders it's it's uh, redundancy so the electric holds them in, but if the electric were to fail, we'd have the, the woven wire there to keep them in. What, what's going on here with these pigs is, that's little right there. And he's pushing the sows around and that's his way of, you know, turning them on. <clears throat> and the, these three sows are staying in this pen and I'm actually gonna add two more in this pen He's going, and then I have another boar. Hey! Yeah, when he's like that all foamy at the mouth, he can get a little froggy with me, too. Because he sees me as a competition for his uh, his women's. All right, I'm coming up on 10 minutes, so I'm going to cut this off. It's Mark from Baker's Green Acres. I'll be coming back at you today because I have a couple of announcements of things that are going to be happening uh, here at the farm over the next couple of weeks and uh, something that's going on this weekend. So it's Mark from Baker's Green Acres. Remember, anyone can farm. <laughs>